Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, 9th of July 2011. To all our friends in Australia, happy Constitution Day. And probably by the time you see this, it'll be too late. I had the privilege of living in Australia for six months while I launched two sounding rockets. So today's trivia question is, what's the name of the famous rocket range in South Australia? While I was busily posting yesterday's The Sun Today, The Sun decided to produce four sea flares. They almost look periodic, don't they? They're very impulsive events, which means they're associated with growth of a region, and the region that we associated it with was that new region emerging in the southeast. And indeed that was the case. Also a bit later, around zero hours UT on the 9th, a long duration event occurred, which was associated with a coronal mass ejection from the same region. I'll have movies of all of those later. So let's take a look at the sunspot picture and see what's been going on. Region 1243 has rotated off the disk now, and region 1246 seems relatively stable, but is also rotating towards the west limb. Region 1245 seems to have calmed down, and the region that was following it that I was complaining about yesterday wasn't numbered, is now numbered region 1248, but as soon as they numbered it, it died. So if they're listening to me, perhaps they shouldn't be. In the southern hemisphere, the region that's been giving all the activity has been labelled 1247, and we have a small spot group appearing just a few degrees behind that, which hasn't been numbered yet. I also noticed there were some fairly intense plas just on the east limb, which are maybe the first harbingers of those regions that I've been talking about that are due to come over the east limb in the next day or two. So we should keep an eye on that area too. I find it interesting that when you look at the movies of the magnetic field and sunspots, that just a few days ago, all the regions of the disk were decaying away rapidly, and now we have multiple regions, both in the northern and southern hemisphere and across a wide range of longitudes, uh, growing together. This implies some sort of global mechanism that drives the emergence of sunspot regions. Once again, the transition movie from the Solar Dynamics Observatory provides quite a bit of excitement. First we have a huge eruption from region 1247 in the southeast, and then there's a spectacular prominence lift off off of the west limb. It also might be worth keeping an eye on that prominence in the southwest, because that looks as though it's about to lift off too. First let's take a detailed look of the eruption from region 1247 in the southeast. You can see a dark filament snaking f away from the region. That filament starts to grow and become unstable and suddenly lifts off. It very much reminds me of the huge event that we saw on the West Limb on June 7th, but only seen from above rather than from the side. Next there's been a spectacular prominence eruption on the West Limb. It looks as though the activity starts behind the West Limb which means it's probably associated with the region 1244. This is an absolutely spectacular event. Look at the contorted and distorted uh, magnetic loops as they rise and explode away from the sun. In the low and high temperature coronal movies, look at the region 1247 and you can see the series of four sea flares occurring, as well as the telltale coronal arcade after the uh, prominence eruption, which is indicative of, of the production of a coronal mass ejection. So now we turn to the SOHO data to see what the coronal mass ejection looked like. First in the C2 instrument, it's clear that this is a halo CME, which means that the coronal mass ejection is at least in part heading towards the Earth. You can also see it faintly in the C3 instrument. The state of the solar wind is interesting. The temperature has been steadily rising over the last 24 hours, but the velocity, although it's increased somewhat, is still not particularly high. The densities continue to increase and the angle and direction of the interplanetary magnetic field has been bouncing around all over the place. Although the speed of the wind indicates that we're still in a slow speed solar wind stream, but there are indications that we should be shortly entering a high speed solar wind stream. The auroral zone is relatively quiet, but we have had some periods of unsettled activity in the KP index. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at B1, the sunspot number has increased to 65, the radio sun intensity has remained at 86, the solar wind speed has increased slightly to 380 kilometers per second, and the density has increased to about 6 protons per cubic centimeter. Geospace conditions have ranged from quiet to unsettled. My forecast for the next 24 hours then is there's a good chance of sea flares, but a decreasing chance of M and X flares. The sunspot number will remain at a moderate level. The chance of getting more coronal mass ejections is good. The solar wind speed should edge higher but the chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is fairly poor. The CME that we saw launched from region 1247 could not affect the Earth for another two or three days, 
if it does at all. In the longer term, over the next day to two days, we should be getting a fairly large region coming over the northeast limb. And we'll see whether the regions that have been growing on the disk will continue to do so. Recently, regions have put on short bursts of activity and then died away. We'll see if that pattern is followed again. The answer to today's trivia question is Woomera. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.